Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to unbox and set up the longer LK1 Plus. So if you've watched our longer LK1 video, this is going to be a lot of the same, only it's much larger. So this is a 400 by 400 by 500 millimeter build volume, whereas the uh, longer LK1 is your standard like 300 by 300. Hopefully we have enough table space here. So we have this gigantic base frame. There we go. Just fits. Under that, we've got a little bit of a assembly guide, a list of parts. And then there's going to be the bed. All right, finally, got the uprights loose here. Put that there. The bed. Their control box is exactly the same as the LK1 with the touch screen on the top. Okay. And then a box of assembly bits. And so let's take a look at what's in this box. We've got snips. We've got the cable with its quick connector for the heated bed a metal spool holder, USB cable. We've got the T brackets that go on the side of the uprights to reinforce the frame. Power cord, of course. A metal scraper, it's not sharpened. A little sample spool of filament. The bed screws and um, springs. A micro SD and a USB adapter. And then uh, the wrench, some zip ties, a little nozzle cleaning needle, and flathead tiny screwdriver. Of course, we also have a collection of Allen keys. So first things first, I'm gonna attach the um, bed to the undercarriage or the Y carriage here. Y carriage, pretty beefy. Um, powder coated in their typical kind of blue color. Um, what I thought was kind of interesting is that these rails, which we've seen many times, the 2040s, but they're usually on their side, um, they're up on end. And not only that, the wheels are only on the outer sides. So most times you'll see a set of wheels on either side of each rail um, and one side having eccentric nuts so you can tighten them. Uh, in this case, there's eccentric nuts over here and over here there are none, and they're only running on the outer sides of these rails, kind of squishing inwards. Um, we have a larger uh, Y-axis belt, um, so this would be a nine millimeter instead of a six millimeter belt. And uh, unfortunately it looks like there's no real way to tension it. Uh, there's little slots in this front bracket here, so we'll have a couple millimeters of adjustability to be able to tension this belt um, if we need to. And right now it seems rather loose. Um, and over time it may stretch a little and we'll need to tension it a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to check the wheels on here. They're all contacting. So as I roll any one wheel, the bed moves up and down. This middle one here has no tension. So I'm going to tighten that first. It's a good idea to do this first because after you've got this huge bed on here, it makes it a little bit tricky to reach under there. Unless you have a longer, a longer wrench, for sure, that'll be a lot easier. All 
there we go. So now with that tensioned, as I roll that wheel, the bed moves, all the wheels are touching, and there's no play in this carriage at all. So now for the bed. The bed has some thermal insulation underneath, um, which should help uh, maintain temperature and heat up faster. That's kind of standard nowadays. So the bed is comprised of a three millimeter slab of glass with a build tack style surface that's laminated to that or bonded to that. And those are just binder clipped onto the aluminum heated bed. It's held on the corners with these long screws here that are countersunk into the aluminum bed. So we'll have to take the glass off. So with the glass off, now you can see these little countersunk holes. And so that when the screws are in there, they're still completely flush. So I'm just gonna th throw the screws in each corner. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm gonna throw the spring on top and then drop them through the holes in the bed carriage and just do the same thing on all four corners. And then we're just gonna thread on the nuts. I'm not a huge fan of these small nuts. I find them hard to reach under the bed, um, but luckily you can replace them uh, either with printed, uh, not inserts, but like over molds that kind of snap onto these to make the, the knobs larger, or you could replace it with something like the Creality larger uh, injection molded knobs. So now we're ready to attach the whole upright assembly here onto the base frame. And that's held on with M5 by 20 or 25, the longer M5 bolts that are in this bag. Is that going to sit? No, of course it's not. Okay, let's lay that down. Okay. So in this bag, we have these T-brackets that go on the outside here, but first we have to bolt up from underneath. So take the longer M5 bolts, there's four of them, and we'll bolt up and under the base frame and through the uprights. I'm gonna hang it off the edge of the table to make this a little bit easier. Okay, so starting to look a little bit like a printer. Just to get this out of the way, I'm gonna attach the heated bed cable. It is kind of nice that it is detachable so that if you do end up with a, a break or a fracture in the wire from bending, uh, that you can easily replace it without having to do any soldering. I'm not a fan of these corrugated plastic um, things over the wires. I much prefer the nylon braided sleeve, but that's just me being picky. Okay, hang that off the side. Um, there is no way to like clip this um, corrugated tube onto here. There's no holder for it. So we'll just end up using some zip ties. There is a, a slit in the back of the extruder here to attach a zip tie to, uh, to hold that up. Um, and then may as well attach the spool holder as well. It's already got the T-nuts threaded onto the bolts. We're just gonna need the right Allen key. Of course, that's not the right one. This one's the right one. There we go. And they show us putting it up here. Now those T braces, there's threaded holes, uh, tapped holes rather, um, in both the upright and in the base frame. So there's two in the base frame and two in the upright. And that's going to be for these screws, the only screws we have left. And so th this upright should already be flush with the side of this. There should be no difference in those. Um, so just make sure that's the case. Um, Cause there is a tiny bit of play in the bolts that we were bolting from underneath. So we just did the right side, if you're looking at the front of the printer over here. On the extruder side, it's a little bit different. 
Um, we have two brackets. So one of them is the Z limit switch and it's adjustable, it's got a slot here. So we're gonna add the T bracket first and then the Z limit switch on top of that. And these two um, top screws here in the upright, um, those will just need to be loosened if we need to adjust the height of the Z limit switch. So thread the bolts through the Z limit switch first and then through the T. There we go. Let's move the control box over to the proper side here. And so the control box is still using these aircraft style connectors for the uh, hot end assembly and the heated bed. The heated bed only has four pins. And then the hot end. And now before we do anything, there are screws here that hold the um, Z axis from moving uh, during shipping. So they're actually through some threaded holes in these uprights. You're gonna need to remove these screws. This is one thing I'll never forget when I unboxed the original LK1. I couldn't figure out why the Z would not move freely. This would be why. From the front view, they just like any, look like any of these other screws that are holding other components onto these carriages. Okay. And we've got a little bit of packaging material stuck on there. Okay, so now, there we go. So as I briefly mentioned, I'm just going to add one zip tie just to hold this loom here out of the way. The zip tie just goes through a slit in the extruder and then just wrap it around. Okay, I'll trim that off later. All right, so now the rest of the cables, let's connect those. Uh, this first loom that I just happened to grab is mostly for this area here. So they're labeled with the little tags like we've seen plenty of times before. This one says X, that's for the X motor. And then there will be a E and it's a small one. So this is for the filament runout sensor on the extruder. And then a larger one that's E, that's for the extruder motor. And then this guy here is going to be also labeled X, and that's for the limit switch for the X, which is under this cover. Right there. And we also need a cable for the limit switch for the Z that we attached over there. So, where are we here? There we are. So this next loom has these two here, Z, Large one and a small one. Small one's for the limit switch. Large one would be for this stepper motor. There we go. And now I'm not entirely sure about the height that I've set this said limit switch, so um, we'll have to be cautious when we home it initially. We don't want to ram the nozzle into the bed. There, right, boom. And then the rest in this wire loom here is for the other Z motor on the opposite side. And then there's gonna be two Ys. So this is for the back of the machine. This looks like a total mess here. But the back of the machine, we have the stepper motor and then we've also got the limit switch right here. Plug them in just like we have all the rest. So now we are left with this. Now from a wire management perspective, we wanna make sure that the bed cable is not tangled up with the rest of them and also not rubbing on the frame of the printer because um, as the bed moves forward and back, it'll catch. So I'm just freeing that, there we go. All right, so now we can turn it on and check all the motion. 
So just before I go homing anything, I want to double check my Z limit end stop here. Um, so you can see that the nozzle is just about to touch the bed. And if I manually move the Z axis lead screws, I'm going to turn them and uh, that's the wrong direction. There we go. And bring it down and we'll notice that the nozzle hits the bed before the switch is actually triggered, right? There's still lots of gap here. So I'm going to have to raise this switch so that it triggers before the nozzle hits the bed. And I'm doing this cold specifically so that I don't end up burning a hole in the bed or anything. So I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to that Z limit end stop, or Z limit switch, and, uh, and then we'll be able to, to home. So after raising the limit switch there, it is triggering just before the nozzle touches the bed. Now, we always have the option of tightening those springs a little bit more. So I want to lower the switch now just a little bit. It's always better to have extra tension on the springs than to have the springs fully loose. There. So now we need to bring the bed down a little bit further. I'm gonna go around to each of the four corners and just tighten the nuts on them a little bit. Great. So now with the bed a lot tighter, we've hit the limit, ends, the limit switch, and we can see that there's some clearance for the nozzle. So that's fine. Um, we'll be able to go around and level the bed with that amount of clearance. So on the LCD screen, let's go to move head, and we have options to home all, or we can home X, Y, or Z individually. So I'm gonna home X. That'll bring it over here to the limit switch. Okay. It's home Y, which will bring the bed back to the limit switch. Good. And then if we home Z, ah, it's actually touching that corner. Just tighten that a little bit more and home that again. Okay. So now I'm just adjusting this one corner so that it's right at the nozzle height. Now on the screen, we can obviously move the individual axes a little bit at a time. Sometimes there's an option to like level the corners or to bring it to set points at the corners. If we go to leveling, there we go. So we can jump to any one of these corners and to the center. So if we go here, go home X, Y, and bring us over to the right hand side. And you'll notice I'm not using paper. Um, I'm not doing any of this hot right now. I'm just trying to get us in the ballpark, right? It's just by eye, loosening the nuts on the corners. So we know all the motion is working. The bed is, you know, at least reasonably level. Um, now we could heat it up. Preheating, set it to PLA. And so that preset there is setting the hot end to 200 and the bed to 60. Okay, so we're up to temperature. Let's go back to the move screen. Uh, under, where were we again? More leveling. Okay, and I'm just gonna move it around and we'll do the standard paper drag method of leveling. And then we can do some prints. Well, just by eye, we've gotten extremely close. I didn't have to make any adjustments on the corners. So now uh, I'm gonna slice up some unique files. I'm not gonna print off the SD card and we'll uh, take a look at those when they're finished. So instead of printing the test prints that were pre-sliced on the SD card, we decided to slice up one of the Thingiverse models of the month. Uh, this is a birdhouse, obviously, um, and it turned out great. This is with the, the neat PLA that you see here. Um, the one 
a couple things actually that I'd like to mention about how it turned out. Um, at the top of each of these circles there's a little bit of drooping or sagging of the filament um, so it wasn't cooled well enough uh, so the cooling could be improved. We were printing it at the low end of the spectrum for this material um, so we wouldn't really want to go any lower there so really the the thing lacking is the cooling at that point um, for that overhang. The other thing that you'll notice as this spins around is uh, this moiré kind of pattern. Um, some people call it salmon skin, but it's this cross-hatching pattern that's very subtle, um, but it exists on all the different faces uh, with uh, different spacing kind of between the diagonal lines. Um, so hopefully that picks it up in the camera well. Um, but other than that, it turned out great. Um, there's no kind of Z-banding to speak of. Um, there is one layer right about halfway here that didn't turn out um, perfectly. It is bulged out a little bit. Um, not sure what would have caused that and another small one down below right here um, but generally speaking when you have Z banding you would see it repeating every X millimeters or you know rotation of the Z lead screw um, we don't have any of that um, it printed great I think this was 24 hours somewhere around there um, so it was printed quite slow around 60 millimeters a second or so um, so anyway that's the birdhouse, and that is the longer LK1+. Plus. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and ring that bell to get notified when we upload more videos like this. Thanks for watching.